Hello, ham radio enthusiasts. Welcome to number six vlog, where I just talk about things going on in the community. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about some really fine uh, wire I found, and I'll tell you where I got that. We're going to do a book review. I've got a bunch of books here, actually. And I'm going to show you uh, one of my QSL cards and tell you a little bit about the weather and what's going on. Uh, right now, these are the band conditions. It looks like 40 is pretty good. It's the only one that's good. Uh, 40 is probably my favorite band as it is. Um, all right, so just wanted to let you know, I bought this. Ron C. let, let me onto this very fine wire. It's very good for making uh, portable antennas. And I got this at the, I got this paid full price at K1C. Oh, I'll, I'll give you the link out there, but it's very fine wire. I think I got 500 feet of it. It's really good for, you know, it's pretty flexible. It can kink a little bit on you, which is kind of a problem when you, if you were to bend it. Uh, but it's, it's not, it's kind of inexpensive, I guess. It's kind of mid, mid range, but the stuff is very fine. It's got a great little ceiling on it. If you're interested in making your own antennas for portable, check out this site. Um, I get nothing for this. I just thought I'd let you know. So uh, I'm going to keep it short tonight. It's uh, been a busy week. Let's take a look at what I've been up to this week. These have been my conditions this week. This is why I've not been outside. I don't uh, care to take my radio outside uh, <laughs> or my camera. And I did get a new camera while we're on the subject. So, so this week I did drop a big amount of money to buy a camera. And I got this beast of a camera with a beast of a lens. It has a frame on. I bought a pr protective frame, protective handle. This is the A7 III. I got this for myself. I got it for an upgrade. I got, I got it for fun. And I got it for my YouTube channel and family. So uh, here's an example of some video that I got with it this week out in the snow. I haven't had a chance to use it much, but here's my antenna mass. I just took it slow here. And here I went out in the snow and got a slow motion video, 120 frames per second with the camera just for fun. I got my daughter going down sledding. I thought that was, I'd just share that with you. That's what I've been doing this week. Okay, so I got this card quite a long time ago. Let's see, this was a 2018, I think. That seems like a long time ago. All right, this is, all right, I got this card. I thought I would share it with you quite a while ago. This is from Mike Salviti, KC3GRI. Uh, Tom, thanks for the patience with the newbie. So everyone tells me they're a newbie, but they all do a good job anyway. CW, 599, 40 meters, and it's a great card. I mean, they did a good job on this. It looks like a postcard, but this is the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Pittsburgh Pirates Stadium. I just thought I'd share that with you. I keep all the cards I get, and uh, while we're on it, I'm going to go. I'm going to do a book review. So those of you that like books, I'm a book collector. One of the reasons I collect books is because I think they're kind of going away. Everything's going to electronic. If you look online, they're so they're getting more and more expensive for the hard hardback books, and a lot more and more cheap. And they're trying to push you towards electronic and electronic. So therefore, I want to collect books because I kind of see them as kind of going away. Not entirely, but they kind of are. For example, my kid is in middle school right now. They don't have books. Next year, they're going to be bookless, entirely bookless. I don't know if I even like that. But on that note, here's what I'm going to tell you to do. Go to Goodwill. All, there's a bunch of Goodwills around you. Go there and just kind of peruse the books and just scan all, go through all of them. And anything that catches your eye, anything interesting at all, I recommend buying it and putting it on your shelf. That's where I got most of my books. I know this is kind of weird, but this is actually a really good book. This is a school book. Probably got it for a dollar or 70 cents. You can get there for a do, a do, two, less than two dollars at a Goodwill. And here in Missouri, you don't pay tax. So... I pick up books like these, and if you just start reading, it's a school book, but it's really interesting. And so what I end up with is the library behind me, and I have lots of books to go through. No, I'm not going to read this cover to cover, but occasionally, especially when I get older, when I get retired, I'm going to have a library of books that I will have, and I think they're going to gain value over time. So, okay. Some of the books I paid full price for. Some of the books, most of the books in here, I paid less than a dollar for. Now, I don't remember where I got this, but it's really interesting this is a very basic book on how physics works. What? It says $33.95 on the, on the cover. I doubt I paid that much. But it's, it's like a lot of little chapters that teaches you uh, about physics. It's kind of ba it's a basic book, but it's a fun book, which is why I got it. I don't want a heavy-duty book, but uh, anything science, anything science, I love it. You know what I mean? So it has problems and questions and things like that. 
lots of illustrations. It's just a book. If you see something like this, pick it up, get it. It's interesting. Now, that's a book I kind of skimmed through. This is a book I actually read a lot of. And it has a lot to do with Arduinos, programming Arduinos and open frameworks. And it kind of has a lot of code in it, but it kind of teaches you how to how to code into an Arduino and how to use Arduino. If you don't know what those are, those are microcontrollers. And you can use it to program little LEDs and turn motors on and stuff like that. Interactivity is what it's meant for. It's really interesting. I, I don't know where I got this book, but it's an okay book. It's got tons and tons of code on it. It's very code intensive. I don't know if you're interested in that or not, but an, interact an interactivity book is pretty interesting. I would actually sell this now. I feel like I kind of... I kind of know that everything that is, I don't know everything that's in it. I don't mean, I don't mean that, but if I were to read it, I would be able to find online uh, anything anyway. So nothing is new to me in that. Okay, now this book is called Code and I did just buy it. I paid full price for it because I couldn't find it any other way. It's brand new. What's funny about this book is it's about, it's called The Hidden Language of Computer Hardware and Software. And what it guess what it starts out with? Binary code. Guess what it starts out with? Guess what? Morse code. It talks about the first few ta chapters, talks immediately about the first interaction, the first communications, and how they were done with Morse code. And they ran into the problem of uh, you can send Morse code over wire, but you can only send it so far. And then the next thing they had to do was either have somebody there relay it to the next station or they created an, a relay. And so then it talks about, and you know, it starts very basic on basic electronics, the anatomy of a flashlight, the anatomy of a circuit. And then they talk about, guess who? My hero, Samuel Morse. And guess what else he was into? Guess what he was into? Photography. That's right. He was into photography. And... He talks about telegraphs and relays, and they tell you about in here about how, like I just said, they had the problem of they could only send a code so far before it would die out. And so they came up with this idea of a relay, and this is kind of a picture of a relay right here where at some point it, you send the code like 300 miles, and then the relay has power itself connected to ground, and it can relay the signal beyond. So the tapping over here creates a tapping over there, creates a tapping over there. It's very interesting. But that's the kind of book this is. It, it starts out with uh, simple binary uh, dits and dosh, dashes, and then it, it's going to go into the hin hidden language of code and computers. And, I mean, once I saw that book, I'm, like, I'm buying that. All right, so I don't have a whole lot this week. Um, this was the vlog. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I, I did a full review on the camera that I just showed you, and I'm going to put it in a link right here. Uh, check that out, and I hope to see you next week.